Guys, what's up? You're watching TOJ. I'm your host, Rico Suave. And today's show is brought to you by ArtByRico.com. That's ArtByRico.com. That's A R T R I C C O.com. I did a video earlier today about Joe Osteen and that he closed his mega church to his uh, parishioners. But I want to talk about why I don't go to church personally. Now, I'm not saying it's okay or not okay. I'm not saying good or bad, right or wrong. I'm just going to talk, tell you guys why I don't go to church personally. My mother, and my mother's actually an ordained minister, and she kind of just let me do my thing, you know, out of respect for who I am. I'm a grown man. I'm in my 40s. So the older I got, I want to learn the history of Christianity and the idea behind the structure of different like brands or branches of, you know how you have um Pentecostal um Methodist Baptist you know um Catholic all those you know like different um I guess brands of Christianity or whatever but once I kind of understood uh, when I tried to join the Nation of Islam, one of the, one of the you know the brothers he, he goes, you know, if you were in Africa right now today, and this is like back in '94 before the Million Man March. He goes, what religion would you be in Africa if you Rico wasn't a slave? You probably would be some you know, you know I don't know what, what, what part of um, the motherland my, my my bloodline come from, but I wouldn't be a Christian. I figured that already and it was questions like that I would say well what happens to the other people across the world that are not Christians then other Christians of course would say well you know Jesus is gonna judge their heart and I realized when I just did more research in general on the source so to speak I realized that Nat Turner wasn't the only dude I didn't realize till I got around other um, not theologians, but other guys, you know, like scholars, like these Brother Umar type of guys who would just debate and debate and just, they, these guys were like welts of information. So one of these guys told me something like, there was not really a campaign. I'm trying to describe the way he said it. He said there was like a, um, like a tour of ministers who would go on slave plantations and just preach this um subservient christianity to the slaves to brainwash them that being a christian and a slave at the same time and that the guys who enslaved you set you on fire um tortured you broke your teeth in your mouth forced you to eat food um who killed your mother were great men and that they were men of god and that you being a christian that your life of servitude, unfortunately for you, is part of that. Now today, when you look at the love thy enemy, turn the other cheek, that does not apply to me. Not until I'm not 27. When I got a black, I got two black sons. You will never see me on TV saying I forgive the police officer that killed them. I forgive the thug nigga or the bastard of a single mother who shot my kids because he got his feelings hurt. You will never hear me. In fact, let me tell you something. They got this really weird doctrine or um, this a creed where it says you treat people with love and compassion. Not this dude here. Let me tell you something. I treat everybody with respect and fairness. I treat children with love and compassion. But grown-ups, you know better. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, a, I'm of the military school of thought. Love and compassion is for your immediate family, like my brothers, my mom, or my wife, if I ever have a wife, uh, my girl, my kid's mother, but strangers outside, even my best friends, I give them love, you know, and compassion too. My, you know, one of my niggas going through something, I'm fuck with me, you know, I'm here for you. But they turn the other cheek, love that enemy shit, bro. That's only made to keep an enslaved people mentally enslaved, which is why Harriet Tubman said, I, I could have freed more people. If they only knew they were slaves in the first place. So look at people like Creflo Dollar 
T.D. Jakes, who worked 400 million. Um, I don't know if T.D. Jakes is worth 400 million, but the point I'm making is once your church has a corporate office, it ain't a church no more. And let me be more, be more specific. Once you have the need to buy a bigger building because your fellowship is getting too big, then you as a as a man of God, you can't give the individual time. Like, like a teacher in a class, you can't give the, the individual time to the people that follow you. Now, what another preacher told me, another Christian preacher, and what he said kind of made sense. He goes, the deacons are there to give me a break. When I want to spend time with my personal wife and my family, that's what the deacons are for. I mean, I don't have the time to give, you know, to every individual person. If they catch me, you know, buying groceries or whatever, fuck it. I'm going to talk, talk to y'all. But he said the deacons, that's, that's what the deacons' job is to do. He also said, I don't need a choir. And the reason I really got turned off from it was the mega preachers themselves as a whole. All the hooping and hollering, the slobbering, the gold... The rings, the fucking alligator shoes, the Cadillac, the fucking Bentley, the private jets. When these guys be stop being public servants and turn into like celebrities, the people who go to those churches stop worshiping God and worshiping and following Jesus. And they started worshiping the pastor. You would hear them say, if I, if I was to say, like in New Orleans, we had, a, we had a guy named Paul Morton. And I would say, I know Paul Morton. There would be ladies who would say, Bishop. Paul Morton, you say bishop, and I'm sitting there like, there's no bishops in a in Baptist church. In Catholics, yes, but you just go make yourself a bishop, and people follow this shit. And I would see that these guys, man, would be faithfully going to church, giving out all their money. I read somewhere that churches, black churches, generate four billion with a B, four billion dollars worth of collections a year combined. That's chaos money. When you got HBCUs closing doors. And you have preachers who have preacher day. Where, you know, you give the preacher some money because he did a good job. I don't know, giving you a pep rally or some shit. So, all this, you know, get my, I, I, I have my way of praying. When I look at protesters, I'm going to, you know, more or less say, yeah, okay, I, you protesting and you bring... Awareness that that situation, but you, you got to have you have to have follow up, tangible follow up. Not get on my knees and pray and just hope that the people who make legislation make legislation in our best interest. I'm not one of them people. I don't pray. I don't march. I don't beg. I don't protest. I don't even vote for that matter. So, in, in conclusion. If you're a Christian, whatever your religion is, that's 100%, that's your right. You know, um, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, those are all the things that, this that the Constitution of this Republic affords the citizens of this country. Even the freedom of religion, the freedom of, of assembly. But I, will, I don't endorse the freedom of stupid assembly. I'm, if you're in church, I'm, that's just my own personal belief. I do not go to church. I don't believe you have the fellowship because everybody else is doing it. You know what I'm saying? Families that pray together, stay together. You pray in your own house. You, your wife, and your kids, that's how families get closer. That's why the Latinos, when you see them go to church, man, they really, really love each other when they're there. With black church, we have a certain individuality, individualism. When church is, when church is over with, we haul ass. Every Sunday to watch, especially during football season when the Saints are playing. You also, when I would go to Arabic church, like the, um, to the mosque, them taxi drivers, them um, gas station owner guys, them dudes really loved each other. You would hear them, brother, come to my house. They they go and they go they do business ventures together. These dudes really love each other. So church works for them. But for us, church never worked for me at all. When I would see the preachers flirting, the choir directors and all that molestation going on, all that fuck shit with, with um, oh my God, Eddie Long and all of those guys, all this, you know, this pastor got a girl pregnant. One dude, I, I remember a deacon walked into church and shot up the fucking church because the preacher was, um, 
was fucking a dude's wife. So, you know, it, it's not for me right no more, man. Religion just ain't for me. God is for me, but not religion. Anyway, hit like, share, subscribe. Those are my thoughts and opinions, guys. Until next time, take care of yourself. And remember, this show is brought to you by artbyrico.com. Go ahead and get that fly art. Support me. Anyway, um, until next time, take care of yourselves. Peace.